What's up? Just fixing my setup here. <laughs> Something like that. I think that also looks okay. Sweet. Just gonna give it a minute or two. Just realized I have sub only comments on or sub only chat. Hmm. Can I change that? I can. There we go. In case someone want to wants to say something but don't want to subscribe, that's fine. Okay, eternal guy, the eternal wait is over. <laughs> so the plan today is to do, uh, I saw something on Instagram as usual. Uh, I didn't save it though, stupidly. Uh, this was can some, some sort of Some sort of like scaling of faces on a grid or something, uh, depending on some sort of proximity to uh, a spiral or something like that. I don't remember exactly. Hey, what's up, Gabriel? Oh, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Uh, so I'm thinking I'm going to do something like that from uh, from memory. Um, a sort of like a uh, stream is this stream four? Hey, what's up? It was sort of like a, looked almost like a Voronoi, Voronoi texture or something, Voronoi pattern, and the faces of the pattern were scaling depending on some proximity to some other objects. So I'm thinking I'm gonna re try to re recreate something like that. Though it's a damn shame that I didn't save the post. <laughs> I have I've been looking for it all week, but I haven't seen it again. Um, so it probably won't be the exact same thing, but something like it at least. So the 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 deal today is to create some sort of uh, effect where we scale the faces depending on. Uh, the proximity to another object, pretty much. And maybe add some... Uh, maybe add some offset with like a noise texture or something too. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I haven't done anything like this before, so I'm, I'm going in blind. This is pretty much how it would be if I were doing it alone. So if you like that kind of thing, then you should stick around. Uh, this is more 
similar to the actual workflow when you're when you're working on your own when you're not following a tutorial <laughs> where you're just like okay i don't know what i'm doing let's try some stuff that's the uh, that's the point of this stream so we'll see where we get i'm thinking about two hours is the max so uh, if it takes more than two hours unless it's super fun then uh, that's where we cut it off around two hours not exact Gin of Blender, I just started watching your videos. Thank you for sharing, and thank you for watching. It's really fun to hear that um, my hastily put together videos are helpful <laughs> to some people. Uh, <clears throat> I would like to recommend also if you want to learn uh, more basic stuff about geometry nodes, not some specific thing, but more the basics of how like vectors works and uh, what the field system is uh, here we see has a ongoing completely new series on his channel which i highly recommend i'm gonna post it in chat actually uh, so if you want to learn geometry nodes uh, from the very very beginning here's the basics I highly recommend his videos. So here's the first one. I'm gonna post in chat. Check it out. If you want to learn the basics, there are two videos out as far as I know. Uh, worth a watch. Made a fractal exercise and had to download the 2.93 version. <laughs> well, I would recommend downloading the 3.0 and up. Um, unless you're using specific add-ons that are uh, specific to a, an, a previous version of, of Blender, then I highly recommend going up to the official re release as soon as possible. Especially if you want to do geometry notes, because uh, that's where the future development is. But okay. Did I ever sell 3D models? Uh, no. The only thing I've ever sold is uh, my Jump Notes puzzle pack stuff. They're free, but uh, if you want to pay for it, you can. If you want to support. Uh, but it's not necessary at all. It's, it's a free asset. For me, like selling 3D models isn't really the way to go, I think. I don't model that much. Uh, and I kind of feel like if I'm gonna sell 3D models, they have to be super top notch. There's no point for me to just pump out some low poly stuff. There, are, There's already enough of that as it is, I think. So if I did that, it would be free models for sure. Maybe if I ever go into the Arch, Archvis again, I might uh, actually upload the models I make. Okay, so I'm going to start with a grid. Um, I think I'm going to turn it into something else. I don't want the squares. Because the one I saw had like something like this. Now the thing is, if you have this, you can do it again to create a different pattern. This beautiful. What are they? One, two, three. Octagons. Pretty cool. Uh, I think it looks a lot better than just squares. You can, of course, do it again and again to get some sort of chaotic stuff. So yeah, just a neat trick. Uh, but I'm thinking uh, maybe we need an object to, to test with. Let me make a use a cube now. 
Then we're gonna use that as the proximity object. We need to set it to relative. So we can change the position and the position is calculated based on where it is in the world instead of at the origin. And then I'm thinking... Um, what should we do first? I think the scaling would be best, right? Yeah, let's do that. So scale elements. We recommend a stable version for learning GeoNodes. Uh, if you want to learn GeoNodes, uh, the best version for experimentation is probably the beta and alpha versions. If you have something specific that you want to do with the nodes that are available in 3.1, then 3.1 is the way to go. But uh, <laughs> there are a lot of cool features in 3.0 and up. I think it's on 3.3 now, right? In the alpha. Uh, they, have the, they have the new hair hair particle system, which is... I haven't really touched it, but I've seen it and it's pretty insane. But I would say 3.1 is good. If you want to really experiment, then 3.2. And if you're gonna want to go wild, then 3.3. The problem now is that a lot of add-ons haven't been able to... or haven't had the time to catch up. So a lot of add-ons doesn't work above 2.93, or even 2.98 in some cases. Mm -hmm. Geometry proximity. Use that as the target. But uh, either either version above 3.1 3 and up is good. 3.0 is pretty good, but there's not enough cool stuff. And a lot of functionality isn't there yet in the 3.0. How long have I been using Blender and have you used any other program? I started using Blender pretty much exactly two years ago, I think. Yeah, it was May, beginning of May in 2020. Uh, I lost my job and I had a couple of months until school started. So I sat down for three months and just did the blender eight hours a day, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, I had no prior experience with uh, 3D modeling. But that's not true. I had made like a very low poly astronaut for a game once. <laughs> but uh, that's about it. It took me like 16 hours to do it. And I followed every step of, I think it was Grant Abbott's. Uh, no, it was uh, Sebastian... Um, I have no idea how to pronounce his last name. Sebastian Laug. Lagu. Log. One of my favorite uh, creators, by the way. His coding adventure series is the absolute bomb. But he has a video on um, character creation and rigging and stuff. So I think I followed that for like two full days to create a very bad low poly astronaut. Other than that, I've just been using like Photoshop and stuff for uh, web design. So I'm thinking uh, we have the distance on this one, which gives us the distance from the object to each, in this case, uh, points, I think it's calculated for. So if you could plug this in here and everything goes big. Oh, it's still scaling. It's weird. That's why is it scaling everything equally, though? Huh. Ah, I think I know it. I think it's the same thing that I stumbled upon last time, where you need to separate the faces first before scaling them, otherwise it's just one big mesh. Hey Ferret, what's up? I'm making... Um, I'm not sure exactly, I'm making something 
where the faces are going to be uh, affected by some proximity object, pretty much. And we'll see where we end up. Uh, I'm basing it off something I saw on Instagram, but I completely forgot to save the post. So I'm going off memory from like four days ago. So we'll see. <coughs> you learned 3D 15 years ago with Maya. Oh. Rent DVDs from the Unit Library. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Always outdated, of course. <laughs> yeah, that sounds uh, not so fun. That reminds me, I think when I was like 10, we we had a subscription for like a PC for all magazine. And each month they gave us a magazine and we, like a, a demo disc with some uh, demo version of programs. I think it was, I wonder if it wasn't like 3D Studio Max. The version that was available in like 99. So that's uh, that's it's true. Uh, that was my first uh, foray into 3D. But uh, the only thing you could do was use pre-packed models, models and pre-packed animations. So you couldn't really do much, and you couldn't model anything. You could just drag stuff into the scene and press play, pretty much. That was fun. That wouldn't work today when a demo of Maya would be like 20 gigs. Good stuff. But yeah, I think I stumbled upon this last time when I tried to rotate the faces or scale the faces that you have to split them first. I think that, that was that's what it was. Yeah. Because if you don't split the edges, then each the elements in this case would just be all of them as one, I guess. I think that's what's happening. Hey, look at that. Pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, and of course the distance here needs to be mapped to something else. So I'm thinking a map range node, maybe. Uh, so it should be going from like 0 to... I don't know. How far is that? Cube is... A half. Should be like 10, maybe. Something like that, maybe? I think I should change this maybe to 40 good. Oops, not 400, 40. And maybe this. Huh. Pretty cool. It's like a searchlight or something. But I guess this should be able to control the falloff then. You create, oh, little island in the middle. But I guess we want zero to be an option. So we're ma remapping the distance of the cube to each point. Scale of the bounding box. Yeah, kind of. Guess you should be able to just reverse it too, right? Neat. What's up, Madva? You don't know 3D. What are you doing here? So I guess this would be like the first step. Maybe I want it to be the opposite, right? I like how the whole field just <laughs> follows along. It 
looks almost 3D, like it's folding into, but it isn't, right? No, it isn't. <laughs> Just a fake perspective, that's pretty cool. Universe card. Okay, sweet. So, what's the next step, guys, in this? I guess since this work, it should probably just replace the cube with something else. Because in the GIF I saw, it was like a... I think it was like a spiral pattern going around. So we can create that object first, I guess. Uh, I think I'm going to do it with drum dolls as well. Because there is a... Curve Primitive primitive spiral I can use um, just convert that to a mesh Get this as the profile then you just need to set the curve radius here and then you need the... Oh, thanks, Madva. Thanks for the 10. Much appreciated. And now you reverse it with a reverse card. So I, I owe you 10. Uh, spline parameter. You're my second ever super chat, my dude. Much obliged. So how big should this be? Maybe something like this. And... You <laughs> have 20. <laughs> it's a reverse multiplier. Unlucky. 100% interest on one second. Yeah, I guess something like this. And... I think I want to... Do I? I think I want to reverse it too. I don't know if there's an easier way. I usually do this. Let's reverse the curve. There should be an easier way. I guess I could just... Oh wait, I just realized I can just... I just can just click this, reverse. Oh no, I can't. Interesting. Is there a reverse curve or something? And I should look at this. Oh, there is a reverse curve. Sweet. That's much easier. Though I kind of need the uh, float curve anyway. In case I want to adjust this. Like so. Maybe up the resolution. And zero height. This is why I love Yarm Trots, doing stuff like this, like spirals. It's so easy to just adjust everything. And like, if you have the spiral like this, you can just use a set position. With like a noise texture. And a vector math scale. Color to vector, vector to offset. Then change the texture scale. Then you can like adjust it like this, and then you have to subtract 
0 0.5 to make it centered. So you can create all kinds of cool stuff. Like super fast. I love that. It's so fun. Like this could be like a enchanted twig or something. Like a tree on top of a cliff or something. Yeah. Love stuff like that. So fun. But that's not what we're doing here. Uh, so we have this. I think that should be enough, right? So next step would be to maybe animate this so it rotates. Yeah, I think that's easier to see what we're doing if we do that. Uh, what should we do? Scene time. And just want to use it on the C axis, like so. So if we press play, it should be rotating on its own. Yeah. Oh, it's not looping though. Ferret, I need your help. I need some math. So what would be the proper amount of frames at 60 FPS for one full rotation? Is there a good formula for that? Because this is in radians, if I'm not mistaken. So 250 frames that I have now would be four, four seconds, I guess, and some micro, uh, some milliseconds. But a full rotation would be 60 times. Yeah, okay, 60 times pi. I think you can just multiply the pi like that. Is that a full rotation? That should be a half rotation, right? Or. So it should be tau, right? See the loops. Nice. Thanks for the tip. I suspect it was something like that. I, I know Tau is one full rotation, but uh, I didn't think it would be. <laughs> I didn't think it would be that easy. <laughs> but that's nice. That's good to know. So every every well every multiplication of Tau would be an extra rotation then. Or I guess 2 pi, yeah. Sweet. I learned something new. Maybe I can set uh, wired. Probably works. So it's moving on its own, good. And maybe we can adjust these things here. We'll drag it in a bit. I wonder if multiply this. Can I make it more? Maybe I need to make this bigger. Like this. Oh, I love how it moves. It's, it looks so cool. <laughs> That's so awesome. Happy to take it all the way out here. Yeah, maybe this is the way to go. And then, 
maybe make the curve thicker. More girth. I'm kind of liking this. I guess I can just play around with uh, these values to get more or less fall off. Oh, whoa. Okay, so if I increase this, this goes up. I should go to not zero, I guess. I think it's because it's not in. I think it's just because it's inside. It's in the center. That uh, it doesn't really work as I think it should. I'll move it up a little bit. Okay. Kind of like the look of that. Looks cool. Okay, and do this to get the reverse. Oh, that's cool. Set this to zero and this to more. Change this to smoother. Could that make a big difference? It kind of does. Okay, that's looking cool. This should be... This should be zero, yeah. Maybe not. This controls the size. This controls the fall off. I'm digging this. Okay, so we have a way to control the affection, how it should affect everything. A map range on the second has the value and then two max. Oh, okay. Interesting. I think one second would be, would be too fast, but that's good to know. That's cool. All right. Uh, so what's next? Oh, I can make them bigger here. Okay. So if I just use this value, I get this. That's because this should be at one. Maybe a little more. So they overlap a little bit. Say we're in the time. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Okay, so 2 max should be this, and this should be maybe 0 0.01, or maybe 0 0.2, something. Okay, so I also kind of want to, I guess, move the faces towards this thing as they grow. So that would be set position. And I think I can use this for that as well. 
So if it's further away, I want to move it more towards the position, I guess. Maybe just towards the center. Maybe that's enough. Let's see. Okay, so. Math. I guess combine XYZ. It should be the offset, right? Whoa. Okay, that's unexpected. Didn't really expect that. <laughs> hmm. I mean, I like it. Keeps going upwards though. Is it just because of the shape of the? Uh, just because of the shape of the this, it has to be right. What happens if I reverse? Yeah, I mean that would be cool. Not sure how that would work though. I guess you could do it on like a sphere and just have this effect like the top, but I don't think it would be. I mean, what happens if we use this too? Okay, that works. Okay, that's cool. Okay, that's cool. I think I didn't think that would work. But that's that's pretty awesome, to be honest. So now I can really see the shading too. So if you just keep the X and Y, then you get the flat version. This would be the case. Okay, so what happens if you use the offset for this? Oh, you get a bunch of artifacts. That's not good. How can you extrude each of those hexagonal shapes? Uh, well, you can use an extrude mesh node, I think. And you will get something like this, where they all become uh, extruded upwards. Uh, you can change it here, how much. And if you want the back to be uh, still be there, because of shading or whatever, you can take a uh, join geometry node, use this original as well, and then just make sure that you flip it so that the normals are correct. Because this is with the flipped, and this is without. Red is not good, you shouldn't see red on a mesh. That means the normals are pointing uh, inwards. And then you can just uh, merge, merge by distance. Create a random height. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, just uh, random value. You set the range here. Plug it in here. Let's say you want from zero to something. I don't know, like this. I think one thing that could be pretty cool is if you take like the face area, um, use that, because then they should be extruded more the bigger they are. Uh, I think yeah, you can see here the the bigger faces here are more extruded, and the smaller ones are almost not at all, because the face area gives you the area of each face. Uh, so of course the bigger ones will be extruding more.
Then you can of course multiply it uh, with a math node if you want it to be <clears throat> more or less extruded. So in this case, they are pretty thick, the big ones. So if you multiply it with a smaller value, then you kind of phone it into a smaller overall extrusion. But yeah. You can extrude backwards as well, or downwards, I guess. Really unexpected. I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> pretty cool. Uh, yeah, the 2D version is pretty cool as well. That one doesn't need extrusions, though. They are overlapping though, which is a shame. I don't, th I don't think this was what I was after. <laughs> it's a cool thing though, but uh, I'm gonna save this uh, as a separate, like um, I call this wavy, create a new one. Uh, so this one would use something different. We skip this and we skip this. Because what I was really wanted to do was move the faces towards uh, the proximity object. So we would need to use the distance to move them. Oh yeah, I can, okay. I can use the position, I guess. This is a proper way to do it. It doesn't really matter in this case because I'm just uh, moving it inwards towards the center. But if you want to move something, if you want the position and get the direction to some other position, you take the position and you subtract the position you want to point it towards. That way you get the, the direction towards that new position. Just a tip. If you go, if you're doing game dev and stuff, that's something you will do a lot. If you want to calculate it on your own, I guess Unity Unity scripting or the C sharp scripting in Unity has in built in direction in their vectors, but uh, whatever, it's good to know. Either way, so we want to offset this. Uh, I guess uh, multiply it. Scale it with negative one. Oh. Uh, yeah, we should scale it with the distance, I guess. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's trippy. But yeah, we should scale uh, this with the distance. But we also need to range this in, I think. So this goes from 0 to like, I don't know, 10. We need to hone that into something else. Maybe in reverse it, so 1 to 0, like this. Kind of liking this, to be honest. Though I think the grid needs to be bigger, or this needs to be smaller. Uh, and I probably need to hone in the scaling here. Something like this. Kinda like this. But maybe I should reverse it. 
Okay, not sure what's happening here. <laughs> What the? I keep stumbling into these things. <laughs> I don't know what's going. Oh wait, okay, I know. It's because we're doing this, so everything outside of a certain radius gets dragged in. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Should smooth this as well. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, I think I liked it better before with the reverse. It should be zero. I think this looks better. I also kind of like this, uh, this weird. Uh, it should be zero, I think. Okay, so if I reverse this, then... This goes inwards. Now this look I like. This looks pretty cool. Now it looks like it's kind of falling, falling inwards. All right, nice. This wasn't really what I was after, but uh, I kind of like how it looks. Now, the thing is, I just realized I'm doing this. I'm doing this because this is taking the direction from each of the positions towards the center here. Which means that if I move this, then it should be doing some pretty crazy stuff. Yeah, that's the thing. That's why it's go okay, that's why it's looking like that. Because it's always scaling inwards towards the center. Yeah, that makes sense. The reverse, though. Okay, this is a look that I like. To be honest. I think I'm going to keep it like this. I like this. And then I want to... Recurve location. Guess I would need to eliminate the C though. Separate X, Y, C. Combine X, Y, C. X and Y. That's actually a really good idea. <laughs> That's so trippy. <laughs> Especially end here. What the, what the hell? 
It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could use this location as well, I guess. Uh, kind of wish you could, because when you get, like, you're using, like you said, uh, ferret, the location. Because this way, like you said, it's always pointing towards the origin of the curve. So, I don't know, maybe offsetting this a bit, like... Maybe offsetting it and then rotating it again. So we get some weird, sick movement. Very nice idea, I think I'm gonna do that. So we move it... Let's see, let's move it one on each. And then we rotate it afterwards, maybe. Does that work? No, because origin is always at the same place, I guess. I wonder, is there a good way to... Oh, I can't affect the origin with this, I just realized. So we would have to do that separately, I guess. Maybe give it some rainbow color pulse. Yeah, I guess we could use like the proximity distance to determine the color. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna keep it like this. Good idea, Ferret. I like this. Need to tone in the... The scaling offset, I guess, here. Like so. So we have a bit more range with this. The front min. Like this. Yeah, something like this maybe. This controls how many how far off the valve goes. This control the thickness in the center. This also controls the fall off. Whoa, that <laughs> That's pretty trippy. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> it goes in and settles and then it just gets pushed back. Okay, something like that. Okay, that's... Bueno. A lot of cool discoveries in this one. The nose node to catch the tail node. You mean like it's, like it's a closed loop?
Then it will just kind of be like a circle, I think. But maybe I can make the this one a bit bigger. Okay, so if I change the height of this, you get all kinds of insane stuff going on. Interesting. Increase the rotations though. Okay, this is pretty trippy. <laughs> I like this. Uh, okay, back to what I was supposed to do. <laughs> uh, let's keep it like this. I don't want to ruin it. Um, so what's the next thing? All right, I was going to do some extrusions, I think. Uh, or some insets. Which I know how to do. <laughs> Zero offset on the extrusion, and then scale just the top. So we scale just this, 0.5. And then I was thinking like, if we take these center parts of each of the faces, and like set a different material on it, To make it look uh, like something else. Yeah, let's try that. So we separate it using this top here. Let's separate the faces. So now we only have the inside, and we can join geometry to get it back. Then we can uh, take a set material, one for each. So this way we can have different materials on each of uh, each of these. So let's see, we have material one and then we need a new one. So that's two. Set that there. Uh, okay, so the mat first material would be the inside. Let's keep it white for now. And this would be the outside. That could look good. Red and white, maybe? Pretty nice. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's clipping. Ah, it's, the, it's the, the smaller ones, because they go out the clip. I don't know if you can really see it. You can really see it from above, so it's fine, I guess. But maybe we can... Maybe we can move the inner ones. Like beneath and um, 
What if we like... What if we use like the proximity object again? To add some new size to the white. Make it a bit like... Randomize it a bit. Like if we... Scale these. Yeah, you can scale these here. Maybe an outline could work. And then map range this again. Something else. So now it goes from, I don't know, a lot, zero to much. Because I'm thinking, what if I have like the outline here, in in the middle? Something like this. Yeah, ignore the, <laughs> ignore, ignore the stuff out here. It's fine. <laughs> you just need to look at this part, I guess. Yeah, something like this, maybe. Yeah, that's fine. I don't know, I think it looks pretty cool. Kind of trippy. Oh yeah, we can change that too. Uh, what else can we change? Change this. Okay, sweet. Then I guess one last thing would be pretty cool if we add some offset noise to the whole thing. So I'm thinking like a Voronoi texture maybe. Use the color of that one. We should get some pretty cool stuff. Not that one though. It's way too much, but uh, we can... We can mix the positions though. So if we take the Voronoi position and the original position, then this would be the original. 
It should be the Voronoi. And I guess we need to add it instead or something. I think it's add. And after that, we mix it with the position. So this is the original. And this is like an... Oh yeah, we need to vector math. Subtract 0 0.5. Like so. So we set this to 0 0.5, it should be like a mix. Perfect mix between the original and the noise. And we don't want too much randomness, I think. It's a little bit. In your light, does that work? What do you mean on this one? You mean on this one then? I don't want it to uh, grow. It's just on top. Oh, okay, cool. Very nice. Very good tip. So now I have a good gradient. Okay, sweet. And what happens if I use can I use location here? Maybe the rotation? Oh, that's something. Oh, my computer is dying. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't want uh, I don't want to offset it on the C though. Mm -hmm. Fine. It's just that one. Keep it flat. Yeah. Yeah, I'm digging these movements. From the Vorona texture. It's like the cells are pushing each other or something. This one is morphing into place, and then like, nope. Yeah, I'm digging this. But the other one was pretty cool too. Um, uh, this wavy one. Uh, 
That was pretty easy. We're just creating the grid, split edges, scale the elements based on uh, the spiral. Uh, using the distance, we're taking the x and y of that as the dist uh, take the distance as the x and y and offset this. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's all there is. So this one is pretty easy. That looks super cool. And uh, here it is. Thanks, Bruno. And here's the other one. The super trippy one. I think maybe I could um, decrease the resolution of this one, because I think that is making it a bit slower than it needs to be. So I'm gonna add a camera. Square. Mm -hmm. And make it orthographic. Mm -hmm. uh, some lights, I guess. What does this look? Spicy. This should be a pretty fast to render, I think. Maybe I don't want that. Maybe I just want the plane below. Ah, oh, thanks, David. Nice to see you. I have a second to render one frame in EV. Not bad. Not bad. Gonna do a quick uh, render, see how it looks.
Maybe it looks better if I show less of the entire thing. So you can't see the end here. Curious. I wonder if the Vorano texture adds too much. Now that, I, now that I'm looking at it like 2 frames per second. There's a lot of fast distortion on these small ones. We'll see. Oh, 10 more frames. Here we go. Let's see if I have a good way of showing this. One sec. Yeah. I think it would look better if the camera was more zoomed in. But I think the Voronoi offset is pretty good. Makes it look kind of like the cells are fighting for their place. Yeah, I think I'll do that. That's a beauty, you can change everything on the fly. So first let's fix the camera. Uh, 
that might be better. And let's fix the offset, I think, on this. Or in the middle. Less distorted. Yeah, that looks good. And I think I want to change the spiral to less. Make it a bit thicker. Something like this, maybe. Yeah, that's nice. Maybe just keep this as a... Just keep it as a black background. Yeah, I think that looks better. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it like that. Probably increase the strength of this to like five or something. Maybe that's too much. Too much bloom. Yeah, that's much better. I like this. I like the contrast. Okay, sweet. I don't need this. Motion blur. No, I, think, I don't think I need it. It's better without, you know, crisp. I think that's it. I think that's the goal. I think I did what I wanted to do. It's not exactly what I want to do, but... Uh, it looks pretty cool nonetheless. Just ignore all this stuff outside. <laughs> you can see it in the camera anyway. It's because of, I think, this uh, scaling of uh, the inside faces. It's fine. Okay, sweet. So let's go through it. See what's, what's going on. And then we'll uh, stop here. So first of all, I'm taking a grid. I guess I could make this a bit smaller. 25 and like 30 probably. Or 35. So I'm taking a grid of a certain size. I do two triangulate and dual mesh operations just to get uh, this pattern here of octagons and squares. Then I split the edges so that I can scale each of the faces individually. Otherwise, they're uh, calculated as a single. All the faces are calculated as a single element. But if we split the edges, we get each face as a separate element. And then I have this uh, uh, spiral that I created with geometry nodes. It's a curve spiral with uh, where I set the curve radius using the factor and the float curve node and the multiply node just to control the 
you know, thickness. Uh, then I use a curve circle as a profile to create the mesh. Then I'm using a scene time node and using the seconds as the C value of the rotation. So as the animation is playing, the C value increases and the rotation uh, gets applied. And I'm using a specific frame, thanks to Ferret, possibly Ferret. Uh, the FPS, 60 in this case, times 2 pi, or tau. So 377 frames is equal to one rotation. So it loops, which is nice. Uh, so yeah, I'm scaling the elements, the faces, using a that spiral using a proximity node. And then I'm mapping the distances of each face or each point to the faces of uh, this. Because this calculates the closest distance, I think, of each point. So it, that's the distance that is getting used. So I'm mapping that uh, using these values to set the scale of the faces. Uh, and then I'm using it, using it again uh, with a different mapping to set uh, the positions of all the vertices. So the position uh, without this would be just this. I'm going to remove the, this as well. So without any modifications to the positions, this is what it would look like, which is pretty cool. It's its own effect, and it looks pretty nice. It looks a lot cleaner, uh, not as uh, chaotic. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy this, call this uh, chaotic. So we have the test, I call it test clean, which is this one, and then I'm gonna use the test chaotic to continue. So first I'm using the proximity, of this object, the spiral. And I'm using the location of the spiral. So if I move that, this is all moving around. I'm taking the X and Y location and I'm getting the direction. In this case, I think it's origin. It's not using any fields here. It's just the origin point of the spiral object. And I'm using the positions of uh, each of these vertices to get the direction. I subtract the position of the vertex with the position of the spiral. So I get a vector direction towards uh, that origin point. And then I'm using the distance, mapping it here, two different values, to scale uh, the direction or the vectors. And then I use that resulting vector as the offset, which creates these weird things going outwards. Wait. Then I'm extruding to create this inset, scaling to create uh, a specific size. So we take up half the size of the original face. And then I'm splitting it up. So I'm taking this uh, inset face as one part, going up here, setting a material, which is white. Taking the other part, which is the original face, down here, setting another material. Then I'm transforming the white part to go below, just to avoid clipping. Then I scale it again using the proximity with another mapping. That's how I get these uh, outlines here. So the further away, the less outlines, and the closer to the uh, spiral object, the more outline there is. And as the last part, I'm doing uh, this thing here, where I'm taking the position of uh, the closest point of the curve. And set that as a vector for the Voronoi texture, which affects the uh, calculation of where to base the origin of the texture to, pretty much. Depending on the field. So I'm taking the resulting vector in the hip of color. Taking the original position of each of the points on this uh, grid. 
using another trick by possibly ferret <laughs> to mix these together uh, with linear light and a uh, mix color or mix RGB node sorry because vectors are the same or interchangeably interchangeable with colors in uh, in this case and then I'm separating it with the X Y and C ignoring the C because I don't want it to be applied upwards or downwards. Then I'm using that to offset the positions. So here I have a slider to uh, control how much this Vorno texture should influence uh, the positions. I think 0 0.5 was a good one. Now this is good. Of course you could remove this and just have the uh, Voronoi affect the positions, which is pretty cool in itself, to be honest. So I think I should set this to zero, so like this. Yeah. Maybe even skip this part with the outgoing stuff. So like this, it looks like uh, cells fighting for survival, I like that. Right, experimental architect. Thanks for stopping by, dude. We're pretty much done here anyway, so it's all good. But yeah, that's all it is, pretty much. It's a bunch of uh, offsetting positions, pretty much. Offsetting and scaling using a proximity object, this uh, curve in this case. So I guess the cool thing is if we use this here as the offset, we can get some cool effect if we move this around a bit. I'm really digging this uh, with just the Voronoi. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Let's keep it simple. I'm not sure about the background. I'm not sure if black is the correct one. Yeah, it's a good contrast, but... It's not the most interesting thing to look at. But the cool thing is that it loops. So everything everything is based on the this this spiral object. It controls everything. He who controls the spiral controls the galaxy. What is what are, what is it they say in Dune? Yeah, I think I'll cut it there. Um, I think it's a pretty good result. So yeah, let's render this out. So this is what one frame would look like. Fast is that? 30 milliseconds. Does there even have any difference if I change it to 128? Really? Two. Sixty-four is good. Yeah. Oh, 
All right. Guess we'll cut it there then. What is it? One, one sixty frame left. I'll keep going. I'm kind of surprised at how uh, organic it looks. That they kind of make room for <laughs> each other <laughs> to fit. I wonder what this would look like with the subdivision surface modifier. I need to try that. It's this one. Let's merge before doing that. Yep, yeah. removed 5,000 5, vertices, that's good. Then subdivision surface. Huh. That's a completely different effect. But they still make room for each other, which is pretty cool. <laughs> I guess you could maybe... In the extrude. I'm just gonna try something real quick. Maybe I can take the edge angle or something. Zero. Yeah, I know, right? It's so weird. <laughs> Just like, like I say, like they, they're making space for each other. It's pretty cool. I thought there was like a face something face neighbors maybe vertex count four 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 eight zero so if i ignore the ones with just four vertices these ones should stay red i think they shouldn't be extruded let's let's try that so if we compare the vertex count so if it's not equal to four, then we should extrude like so. Or if we set it equal, we get the reverse. That's not as cool though. But this is with the subdivision surface, I realized. So without the subdivision, it looks pretty good with the squares also being uh, extruded. Well, it's something you can affect, at least. If you want. But with the subdivision surface modifier, or a node, then yeah, definitely. Looks better without the smaller ones being uh, inset. So let's render this one too. I think. I 
But yeah, that's all there is. So, uh, thanks for stopping by and hanging out. And uh, I hope it was helpful in some way. Uh, if not, I hope it was at least fun to hang out, check out some geometry nodes, trying out some different stuff, just experimenting. And um, I'll see you next time. Right. Peace.